It's hard to imagine a place more haunted than Nuremberg in October 1945. The bombed streets stank of dead corpses, and those who survived starved. The ghosts of those who had attended the early Nazi rallies, whose salute to victory must have still echoed through the city, confronted by the ghosts of the victims of the war and the Holocaust, who had come to the courthouse to demand justice. One observer wrote of the stream of visitors who made their way to Nuremberg during the year of the war crimes trials that all of the world seems to have arranged a rendezvous at Nuremberg. It doesn't require a huge leap of imagination to perceive that all of the afterworld may have arranged a similar rendezvous. In the presence of so many ghosts, even if they are now only distantly remembered, it is hard to know where to start to tell the stories of the war crimes trials at Nuremberg. When his party lost the 1945 election, Maxwell Fife was out of office. However, his Liverpool colleague and friend, Hartley Shawcross, now Attorney General, asked him to lead the UK prosecution team in Nuremberg. The British War Crimes Executive, the body created by the government to deal with war criminals, were, in 1945, based in Church House, just around the corner from the Houses of Parliament and the Maxwell Fives flat in Great Peter Street. Darling, I shall write a little today and finish over the weekend and take it down to Church House on Monday in the hopes that this will reach you and that I will hear from you soon. My dearest angel, it is horrible being without you and although I try and stand by our old ability to take it, the prospect is vile. Really, these first three days have been so long that I hope sincerely that they will pass more quickly by and by. We are in Zerndorf, a village about five miles out. It is pleasant, fine wood country, and it looks lovely today. I got your letter with the greatest joy and relief at tea time. I hope so much you got mine. It seems less remote when I know the details of what you were doing. I have never been away from them in twenty years. My job is partly conducting a seemingly unending international conference, partly running a small department, partly commanding a military unit, and lastly, getting a case up for trial. As I was writing these words, your sweet letter came, which cheered me up enormously. I could kill all the ruddy people who are being such a bore. It may be excellent for your psychology, but it makes me mad. If you don't complain, I know I mustn't, but time goes very slowly. I have fixed a delegation conference at 9.15 each morning for allocating work and receiving reports. This is a rather successful Nuremberg innovation because everyone can bring up their thoughts and troubles and it makes them feel that we're in the show together. It sounds frightfully Western Brothers, but it happens to work. While Maxwell Fife worked in Nuremberg, Sylvia took care of constituency business in Liverpool. I have done the inaugural meeting at Green Lane and a party given by the councillors at Buckfield. Everyone was perfectly charming and the men all treat me as one of themselves. So it will tide over till you return if I do it fairly often. Your message, which I read, was a great success, and I told them all a great deal about Nuremberg, in which they were most genuinely interested. Thank you for your magnificent doings in Liverpool. You are the most amazing success, not the happiest adjective, but you know what I mean. The Russians threw the usual October Revolution Party, which we have so often rushed through together at the Soviet Embassy. I proposed the toast of the Red Army. The interesting thought was to look back ten years and wonder what we should have said if anyone had foretold that in ten years I'd have been proposing the health of the Red Army in a conquered and shattered Nuremberg. The letters speak of a deep desire to tell one another what's going on, and perhaps, at least on Fife's part, to keep an informal record of extraordinary times. But more, they tell how Maxwell Fife found the strength to tackle the evidence of Nazi brutality. I went to a preview 
of the Russian film in Auschwitz concentration camp. When one sees children of Moe's age and younger in this horrible place, and the clothes of infants who were killed, it is worth a year of our lives to help to register forever, with practical result, the reasoned horror of humanity. It is just as well that in respect of the Nazi war crimes, the apologist of the future will be confronted by the admissions of the many found guilty and the mass of incriminating documents produced at the trials. <laughs>